to the office and found an, ex an inexperienced handyman painting the walls. The handyman was wearing two heavy parkas in a, on a hot summer day. Thinking it was a little strange, the businessman asked the handyman why he was wearing the parkas on such a hot day. The handyman showed him the instructions on the can of paint and they read, for best results, put on two coats. You can follow something real literally and be wrong. <laughs> in John 8, 36, it says, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Is this close enough? Right there? The people of the world are bound. They don't know it. When you're bound, you need to be free. You need to be set free. If the sun sets you free, you'll be free indeed. I remember one time when my father needed to be set free, and I was able to do that. He was trapped inside of a hearse. It's funny when you think back of it, but he pulled the, I grew up in a funeral home, he pulled the hearse out and it stalled partway out of the stall, out of the, out of the garage. There was a pilaster on each side about this close, it was very close, and he couldn't get the front doors open. There's no way to open the back door of a hearse from the inside. You're never going to have to do that. <laughs> There's no door, there's no handle on the inside. Maybe nowadays there are. So I heard him yelling, Woody! <laughs> and I went over there and opened the back door from the outside, which is the only way you can open a back door of a hearse. He needed to be set free. He needed freedom from the hearse. People follow all kinds of philosophies. Some of those philosophies are religious. Religion is binding. The people who are religious need to be set free from religions. Religion is not freedom, and religion will separate you from God. Religion is a set of behaviors. The adherent follows the behaviors, and they think that God is obligated to bless them. They even think they can get into heaven by what they do. Jesus um, did. You can't do anything to get into heaven. It insults Jesus that you think you can gain heaven by something that you do. If that were true, Jesus wasted his time dying on the cross. Marxism is a religion. They claim that they hate religion, but they are religious. They don't tolerate any other religion. They hate the nuclear family. They hate the idea of private property, all of which are in the Bible. They hate any traditional God-oriented religion or faith or practice of faith. They would call it a philosophy, but a philosophy with fervent adherence is a religion or is religious. Galatians 5.13 You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. We are called to be free from the legalism of Leviticus. Paul had opposition from what we call the Judaizers. They were insisting that Christian converts had to convert to Judaism first, including circumcision, before they could become Christians. And Paul was banging heads with those people all the time. We are called to be free from sin and its consequences. The wages of sin is death. We are called to be free from the terminal wages of sin in the flames of hell. 
We are called to be free from that. Freedom is not an excuse to do anything we want to do. We're to be free from the world, not free to indulge in worldly practices that once drove us. Now we are driven by the Holy Spirit. Our marching orders are in the Holy Spirit inspired Bible. I'm going to start pushing this button. <laughs> Our leading is by the Holy Spirit. We are led of the Spirit, not by traditions. When we were growing up in the, in the Catholic Church, they taught us that, that, the, that the doctrine of the Church was based on the Scripture and the traditions of the Church. But it was more on the traditions of the Church than it was on the Scriptures. But we don't... You know, we're not led by traditions. We don't have to do the same things as our grandparents did. They sang hymns out of a book. There's nothing wrong with that. And we sing off a screen. There's nothing wrong with that. It's what you're doing. Praising and glorifying and honoring God. It doesn't matter if it's in a book or a screen. Nothing wrong with either one of those things. The intention is to honor God. Religion honors the adherents of the religion. Or in some cases, the rulers or leaders of the religion. Such as in the, well, some of the Catholic churches. Some of the mainline denominations change their doctrine to conform to social pressures. We have openly gay pastors, openly gay bishops gay marriage is in the church I would lose my credential which is in the assembly of God if I did something like that and rightfully so denominations that condone such perversions are off the rails they're not following the directives in the scriptures they're following changing social pressures our doctrine is based on the unchanging holy word of almighty God your word O Lord is forever settled in heaven 2 Corinthians 3 17 now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom we're talking about freedom today the Lord says now the Lord is the spirit the Lord to whom we have come when the veil was removed that's Jesus. And he is the spirit. He as God is of a spiritual nature and essence. He is a spirit as God is. In John 4.24. Which reads, God is spirit and his worshipers must worship him in the truth and in the spirit and in truth. He is a sender of. He is the sender. Jesus is the sender of the Holy Spirit of God. Luke 24, 49, I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with, on, with power from on high. Jesus is the sender of the Holy Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We're talking about freedom today. He is a spirit of illumination. John 1, 4, and 5. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. If you're in the dark, you are not free. You, you don't know where you're going. You don't know what, what you're going to bump into, and you don't know what's sneaking up on you when you're in the dark. There is freedom from former blindness and darkness where he is a spirit of regeneration and sanctification, there is freedom from the bondage of sin and the captivity of Satan, in which people don't even know that they are such. Where he is a comforter, there is freedom from the fear of hell, of wrath and of damnation. Where he is a spirit of adoption, there is freedom 
of children, as children, as with a father, where he is a spirit of prayer and supplication. There is liberty of access to God with boldness. When the believer prays, God hears. God listens. Trust that God hears your prayers. Galatians 5.1, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. The fact is that Jesus has made us free. If we live in bodies to a legal relationship with God, it's not because God wills it. God pleads with us to take his strength and walk in that freedom and not to be entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Observe that it is Christ who has made us free. We don't make ourselves free. Freedom is a gift of Jesus, given to us and received by faith. When we struggle to free ourselves, we just become more entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Jesus did for us what no one else can do. Mohammed can't do it. Buddha can't do it. Confucius can't do it. Ramakrishna can't do it. There's no other God. There is no other Savior. Jesus paid it all, and that is a miracle. Salvation is the greatest healing that we can experience. It's a miracle. Paul also made it emphatic, the liberty. Today, people live in the headlong pursuit of freedom, which they think is of as doing whatever they want to do. No, no guidelines, no rules, and never denying themselves any desire. This is a kind of of liberty it's a false liberty but it's not the liberty that Paul's referring to the liberty is our freedom from the tyranny of trying to earn our own way to God the freedom from sin and guilt and condemnation freedom from the penalty and the power that eventually freedom from the penalty of sin stand fast means that it takes effort to stay in this place of liberty someone who is legally made free in Jesus can still live in bondage they can be deceived into placing themselves back into slavery this is from evangelist deal evangelist deal moody illustrated this point by quoting an old former slave woman in the South following the Civil War. Being a former slave, she was confused about her status and asked, now is I free or been I not? When I go to my old master, he says I ain't free. And when I go to my own people, they say I is. And I don't know whether I'm free or not. Some people told me that Abraham Lincoln signed a proclamation, but Master says he didn't. He didn't have any right to. Many Christians are confused on that same point. Jesus Christ has given them an emancipation proclamation, but their old master tells them they're still slaves to a legal relationship with God or to the old worldly things that they were once doing. They live in bondage because their old master has deceived them. And then he said something about the yoke of bondage. This phrase reminds us of what Peter said in Acts 15.10 about those who would bring the Gentiles under the law. Now therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. They were trying to force new Christian converts into following all the directives that they had in Leviticus and all those laws, 600 and some, 
that they insist people follow, the, the Pharisees. The Jews themselves were not able to justify themselves before God by the law. So they shouldn't put that heavy burdensome yoke on the Gentile converts to Christianity. But that is what they were doing. And that's what happens with extreme legalism in the Christian churches. Acts 13, 38 to 39, Therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through Jesus the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin, a justification you were not able to obtain under the law of Moses. We're talking about freedom today. Ephesians 3.12, In him and through faith in him, we may proclaim God with freedom and confidence. Outside of Jesus, we don't have the freedom even to approach God. The ancient Jews had to go through the high priest. The high priest could go into the Holy of Holies only once a year and not without blood. And that was where the Ark of the Covenant was. And he could only go in there once a year and he had to have blood. And they would put a rope around his leg because if God struck him dead, they would have to pull him out from under that curtain. People couldn't approach God directly, but only through the high priest. Now, we can approach God through Jesus our Lord. He's our high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. He went to the Holy of Holies in heaven with his own blood. When he said it is finished, the curtain that separated the people from God was torn in two, and there was never any need for priests anymore. There's no barrier. We can approach God directly. We have that freedom. Before Jesus, they couldn't do that. Now the only barrier is our own sin that keeps us from God. Jesus restores us, redeemed us, brought us into a reconciled relationship with God. We've been talking about freedom from, but there's also a freedom to. As a child, I wanted to be free from the penguins. Actually, I wanted to be free from school because he was dominated by penguins. She was there right from first grade. We were there together in the same classroom all that time. Penguins. <laughs> I hated school. I can remember wanting to be free from school. I can't remember a happy day in 12 years of school. Can't remember a happy moment. I left my happiness outside the door, went into school, picked up my happiness when I came back out of school. I can't explain that. It's just the way it was. I couldn't relate to the teachers. They were penguins. <laughs> They were really strict, you know, at least in my view. I didn't want to learn. I didn't care about what they were presenting. School was like a prison to me. It wasn't their fault. Looking back on it, I was probably just antisocial. The wrong of that was in me, not in them. They educated many very accomplished people. I think they did care about us. I couldn't feel that, though. After all, they were penguins. <laughs> and one of them was my cousin, my dad's first cousin. I wish I'd have spent more time with her. Sister Josephine. Her grandfather was my great-grandfather who was in the Civil War, and I had a lot of, I would have a lot of questions. I didn't understand. I just thought she was a distant cousin. But her grandfather, and she lived in Sigel, and he lived in Sigel. She would have been hanging out with him. She would have known things that nobody will ever know again about him. 
but and she when I was in eighth grade she was the eighth grade teacher she also taught Johnny Unitas in eighth grade if anybody knows who that was he was a great quarterback Baltimore Colts and she was he was her she was his eighth grade teacher but I got uh, pneumonia double pneumonia and they were treating me for the pneumonia with penicillin which I was allergic to and I got really listless my dad went over their heads and he came he had an, his own ambulance and he came in the middle of the night one night I can remember hearing him come down the hall and the nurse arguing saying you can't take him you can't you can't and he said get out of my way and he came with another friend of his they loaded me into the ambulance and took me to Pittsburgh to Children's Hospital saved my life but I was out of school for six weeks and she came you have to repeat if you're out if you if you miss a certain amount of time but she came to the house after school and tutored me to catch me up to the grades which I never made good grades anyway so even though she was a penguin but she still had a heart I don't think I think she would have done that for anybody I don't think she it's just because we were related you know teachers do have a heart for the kids they really do I just didn't perceive that but when school was out for this summer I was so happy freedom I wouldn't have to go back to that place until next fall my mom would have egg salad sandwiches ready on the day school was out that was one of my favorites an iced tea which she had to brew from the bags I shouldn't tell you this but I used to dunk my egg salad sandwich in the iced tea <laughs> I really did hey don't knock if you don't try it <laughs> But it was freedom from the tyranny, my perception of the tyranny of school. Freedom to run around, freedom to chase butterflies, freedom to go swimming, hang out with my friends. There's a freedom from, and there's a freedom to. Freedom to do things isn't without limits. Our freedom doesn't allow us to harm other people. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. It doesn't, it doesn't allow us to insult other people our freedom comes with guidelines our freedom comes with responsibilities first Peter 2 13 and 17 submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority whether to the Emperor as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to condemn those to commend those who do right for it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Doing good is a requirement. Submitting to authority for the Lord's sake. We don't, we don't submit to evil authorities for them to tell us, order us to do evil things. That wouldn't be for the Lord's sake. For instance, a baker or a florist who doesn't want to honor a gay marriage won't submit. Sometimes they're forced to. They'll force you out of business. They won't do that. Ministers who preach the truth about gay marriage may not be submitting. In Canada, there are there's some in prison. I think in Australia they put you. They'll lock you up if you preach the truth about gay lifestyle live as free people but do not use your freedom as a cover up for evil live as God's slaves um, voluntary temporary indulge indentured Hebrew servants they were uh, people who needed assistance or who simply couldn't not pay their debts they might turn to a voluntary form of servitude and the Bible had guidelines for this kind of slavery or voluntary subjection Exodus 21 2 now these are the ordinances which you are to set before them if you buy a Hebrew slave he shall serve for six years but on the seventh year he shall go out as a free man without payment the people could sell themselves into slavery and with the cost the price of selling themselves they could get out of debt 
or do for their family or do things they weren't able to do for themselves. The owner was not to, was to treat them well and send them off at the end of that six-year period with the means to live. So in other words, do what God impresses you to do. Every impression isn't from God. The Spirit always goes the way of the Word. If what you're hearing, or what someone is telling you, or what some spiritual leader on television is telling you, make sure that it's soundly scriptural before you do it, or even before you believe it. Verse 17, show respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Christian, Christians may think that they have the right to disrespect those in leadership, especially when they are doing things that we see as ungodly. But we're required to respect them. Yes, even them. <laughs> you can imagine. You can, you're required to respect them, not to disrespect them. Romans 6.22, but now that you have, you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. We enter into voluntary servitude. The Emancipation Proclamation put an end to involuntary servitude, the evil slavery that was in this country for a couple hundred years. But we were in involuntary servitude to the God of this world, to Satan. We were slaves to our own desires. We were at odds with God. We were in bondage. Being a voluntary slave to God through faith in Jesus has the benefit of holiness, without which no one will see God. You can't be holy without Him, and you can't look forward to seeing Him without holiness. Let me say that again. You can't be holy without Him, and you can't see Him without holiness. So God made a way. 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made Him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. So we don't have any righteousness of our own. If we think we do, we're fooling ourselves. The righteousness of Christ is imputed, that means put on to us. He puts His holiness on to us when He washes us with His blood. Now when God looks at us, He sees the blood of His Son, which was applied to us when by faith we came to Him for salvation. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. We can't purify ourselves. People try. He's the purifier. You can't save yourself. You can't pray enough. You can't give enough. You can't do enough good works to buy your way into heaven. It's only faith by faith in the Lord Jesus and his death on the cross that we can be saved Romans 8 1 to 4 now therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus the law of the spirit who gives you life has set you free from the law of sin and death we're talking about freedom today freedom from the law of sin and death. 4 verse 3, what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh, verse 4, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. That's a miracle. There's a miracle in that. 2 Corinthians 7 1. Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves 
from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. It all begins with Jesus. John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. First Timothy 2, 5, For there is one God and one mediator between man and God, the man, Christ Jesus. And Proverbs 8, 35 and 36, For those who find me find life and receive favor from the Lord. But those who fail to find me harm themselves. All who hate me love death. It all ends with Jesus. Our freedom is in Jesus. Some think that to belong to Jesus is not freedom. Some think that, that doing whatever they want without re out regard for the notion of holiness is freedom. Some think the world some in the world think that they are free. They are deluded. I can remember thinking that way. Thank God, now my freedom is in Christ. I am God's voluntary slave. I am free to live, love, and serve Him. Only in Christ can we be really free. Psalm 102. I read this before. But you, Lord, sit enthroned forever. Your renown endures through all generations. You will arise and have compassion on Zion. For it is time to show favor to her. The appointed time has come. For her stones are dear to your service, and her very dust removes them, moves them to pity. The nations will fear the name of the Lord. All the kings of the earth will revere your glory. For the Lord will rebuild Zion and appear in his glory. Everybody that lives wants to be free from something. Free from hunger. Free from oppression. Free from fear. Free from condemnation. The captives. The Hamas captives want to be free. The Palestinians want to be free. But Hamas wants them to stay in slavery. Wants them to stay put so they get bombed. So they can display dead bodies in front of news cameras and blame Israel. Our freedom is in Christ. Not in doing what we think we ought to do or what we want to do. But obeying the directives of our Lord and Master, revealed in His Word, revealed directly by the Spirit, revealed by preachers and teachers. Don't believe everything you hear. Check it out on the Word. Make sure that your freedom is in Christ and not in notions about what you figure you shouldn't do anymore. You know, we went to a... We came to... When we came to Pennsylvania, when we moved back to Pennsylvania, we went to a church for about a year. It was an Assembly of God church, but they were very, very legalistic. Um, the preacher preached against makeup and jewelry and stuff. The ladies got around my wife one time. She said, we don't wear pants in church. We don't wear, she was wearing pants. We don't wear pants. And that... Show me in the Bible. Show me that. Show me. We need to be free to do what the Bible says. Free from the world. And to be doing what God says. Amen. That's our freedom. That's our freedom. Freedom from, from 
the bondage of rules and regulations like that. He used to he used to have a yardstick at the door. He was a he was a, his own greeter. Measure home. Measure women's school. That's true. And this was a very sweet person. He wasn't a mean ogre of a guy. Very sweet, gentle, jovial. Um, who's that guy you were listening to in Clearfield? What's his What's his name? Yeah. What's his name? What is it? No, the guy you were listening to a series of teachings over there. He was a minister. He was a missionary. Sam Brillo. Well, Sam Brillo's wife was this guy's daughter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We finally left that church, not because of that, but because they didn't have any ministry for children, and we had children. They had Sunday school, and that's, that was all they had. And uh, Anyway, um, I didn't even plan on saying anything about, about that. But it's true. You can be bound with self-made regulations based on our own impressions and attitudes, based on traditions, and they don't mean anything. What it means something is God's Word. He wants us to do. We need to be free to do what He wants to do and not to do the world and not to do what we're bound in our own thinking to do. We can be bound by our own thinking, our own, our own traditional attitudes. We can be bound by that. We need to be free. Amen. Would you stand? God, our Father, we thank you for the few moments we had to share these truths from your word, Lord. And I pray that as we go forth from this place, you will keep us from all harm, grant for all those mercies, and um, bring us back tonight to a good victorious concert tonight, Lord, at 7 o'clock, or at 6 o'clock. Meanwhile, keep us safe, and uh, keep us blessed, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.